Hey, welcome back students. Mr. McCoy here. Today's going to be a fun lesson because we're learning about Boolean variables. And people like talking about Boolean variables because they like saying the word Boolean. They also like mispronouncing it and saying Boolean. That is incorrect. It's named after a guy named Bool. And these are his kind of variables. It's actually an entire field of study in mathematics that covers Boolean variables and Boolean logic. We're not going to get too advanced with it today. So Boolean is a primitive data type, just like int or double that we learned at the beginning of the year. So now we have another data type that we can use. The difference is that a Boolean variable can uh, only store true or false. Like uh, if we declared an int, we could store numbers from negative 2 billion to 2 billion. Uh, Booleans don't contain numbers at all. Booleans just contain two states, true or false. So what's the point? That doesn't seem very useful. All it can hold is true or false. Integers can hold lots of information. Boolean seems pretty weak. Uh, well, yeah, it's not used a ton. That's why we waited so long to even learn about it. Um, but it's used often in programming for something called a flag. So that would be a way for your program to know if something happened or not. It would be a way of keeping track of game states or whether or not something has happened, whether or not um, the character has a particular item. Um, so let's figure out how they work and then we can uh, go back to that example. So just like with integers and doubles, you can declare and initialize booleans. Here's how you do it with an integer. Here's how you do it with a double. And you do it very similarly with a boolean. You say your data type, boolean. You give it a variable name. I called mine has dungeon key and then you give it a value. I'm going to give mine the value of true. You can only put true or false here. So if you had a game where you were like doing a, a dungeon crawl game and there's a dungeon key that you're supposed to find, you could have a variable called has dungeon key and you could set that to false and then whenever the player finds the key you set it to true and it's a way of keeping track as to whether or not the player has found the key or not. That's one of the more common uses for a Boolean variable. It lets you know if something has happened in your program or not. Now whenever you're naming a Boolean variable, you can use any identifier you like as long as it follows the rules of identifiers, but there is a naming convention. With Boolean variables, we generally name them to sound like a question because their value is true or false, so we want to have a meaningful name attached to it so that we know what that true or false means. So if I have boolean has key, then a value of true would mean that we have the key, and a value of false would mean we don't have the key. Good pressure, if it's true we have good pressure, if it's false we don't. If you just called it pressure, then you would assume that pressure would maybe be a number, but good pressure, that's a state. So notice that all of these names kind of sound like questions that could be answered as true or false. You can use those scanner methods to get uh, booleans from a user from the keyboard. Uh, remember back whenever we were learning scanner methods there was a slide that talked about next int and next double and next and next line and it also mentioned next boolean but you didn't know what to do with that yet now you know what to do with it. Um, so here's an example we print a prompt play game true or false and we're waiting for the user to provide some input through console.nextboolean. The user can either type in true or false. That's the only data that next boolean can see. If they typed in something else and hit enter it would crash your program. Typically we don't get booleans from the user. Typically we set game states internally. We wouldn't allow the user to type a true or false but I want you to know that you can and you will in the labs. So booleans can be used for comparisons. We've been uh, doing a lot of if statement labs and uh, I want to show you how booleans work in comparisons. Let's say we have a boolean called b and it's set to true. If b is greater than 15. So does that make any sense at all? Let's put true in for b. True greater than 15. How do you compare true and 15? You can't. So this makes no sense. Java's not going to let you do that. We can compare a boolean value to true or false. So we could say here 
if b is not equal to false. So what does that mean? Uh, let's replace b with true, since its value is true. If true is not equal to false. Well, true is not equal to false. That is a true statement. This entire thing would evaluate as true because true does not equal false. Yes, it gets even more confusing than that. So here's some common usage for a Boolean. Let's declare one called good pressure, set it equal to true, and then we could throw good pressure into an if statement. If good pressure equals true, then we print tire pressure normal. So since it was equal to true, we printed tire pressure normal. Um, remember, you have to use double equals for comparisons. Now this is actually kind of redundant, because uh, good pressure, what's the value in good pressure? It's true. So what we're really saying, if true equals true, well, of course true equals true. It's kind of weird. True equals true will evaluate as true every time, right? So there's actually a way that uh, most people shorten that. Because Booleans can only be true or false, they themselves can be used as the condition of an if statement. So check this out. If good pressure. That's all you have to say. You don't even have to use a relational operator because good pressure already evaluates to true or false since it's Boolean. Good pressure is true, so if true, well, if as long as this is true, we do this stuff in here. So if the value in good pressure is true, we run this. There's no need for even including a comparison operator. If you're looking to see if good pressure was false, then you would need to go a step further. So here's if good pressure, and that would run if it's true. If we only want, wanted something to run if it was false, you would have to do like this. If good pressure equals false. Or alternately, you could say if not good pressure using the exclamation point, because that would negate it. And here's that negation operator that I was just talking about. Remember that the negation operator flips a true to a false, or flips a false to a true. So if I said boolean a equals false, and then I printed not a, well, a is false, not a would be true, so it prints true. Here I have boolean b equals true. I want boolean c to be equal to not b. So we're saying make c be the opposite of b. So if b is true, then c is false, and when we print c, we see that it is indeed false. At the end of our notes, it shows some examples. Uh, you won't typically use coding like this, but I uh, wanted to include it in here just to show you how it could work. It still follows the same kinds of rules for, uh, for setting values in a Boolean. So I know this line looks pretty weird, but uh, let's walk through it. A is equal to 4, so we want B to be equal to something. Well, let's figure out what that something is. A compared equals 3. So we're comparing equality of A and 3. Does A equal 3? Well, A was 4, so A does not equal 3, so this evaluates as false, and therefore we store false into B. And then whenever we print B, you'll see that it is indeed false. So all of those comparisons that we've been writing for test conditions in our if statements can be used to give value to Boolean variables as well. Is apples greater than or equal to 12? Yes, it is, so that's true. And has dozen becomes true. When we print has dozen, you can see that it's true. Let's take a look at our labs. OK, so I've got BlueJ open. I've got my practice problems class and my basic blackjack class, which is the app that we're going to start writing down here. It's not a fully functional blackjack game yet, but we're going to work towards that. It just starts getting us thinking about the logic behind a blackjack game. But let's take a look at our practice problems, and I'll do a couple for you. Declare two double variables called num1 and num2. Get their values from the keyboard. Well, nothing too exciting there. We need a prompt, system.out.println, enter a value for num1, and we need to declare a new double called num1, where we'll store that information, and use console.next double to get it from the user. And then I need to do the same thing for num2. 
and I can just copy and paste that. Change num1 to num2 and compile. Let's check it out and make sure it's working. 23, 45, okay. Now I don't like that it's not entering on the same line. I should have used print rather than print line. Okay. Problem two. Using only one Java statement, declare and initialize a Boolean variable called nums are same that stores either true or false depending on whether or not num1 and num2 are the same. This should be done without an if statement. Okay, well it says do it without an if statement, but first I'm going to do it with an if statement just to show you what that would look like. It says declare and initialize a Boolean variable nums are same. Okay, so Boolean nums are same. And we don't know what value to put in there yet. I'm just going to put a random value in there, call it false. But then let's put a real value in there. If, uh, if num1 is equal to num2, notice they use the double equals, then we want nums are same to be equal to true. Else, nums are same would be equal to false. All right, so I know I did a lot of extra work here. First off, we said that nums are same is false to begin with, so it's unnecessary to change it to false in the event that they're not true. So we could make that go away and just say, if the num1 and num2 are the same, then we change the value of nums are same from false to true. Otherwise, it just stays false. So that's how you could do this with an if statement. But the instructions say do it without an if statement. So what would that look like? Well, here's how you could do that. Let's say boolean nums are same is going to be equal to some value. What value is it going to be equal to? Well, let's just take a look at the comparison between num1 and num2. See what I'm doing here? I put in a Boolean expression, num1 compare equal to num2. So it looks to see, are num1 and num2 equal? If they are, then this is true, and it stores true and nums are same. If they're not equal, then this is false, and it stores false and nums are same. So I just achieved the same result with a single line of code, no need for an if statement. And then just to test it out, I'll go ahead and do problem three also, where it says to print to the screen. It says to print to the screen the value of nums are same. So let's put in a message here, num1 and num2 are the same, question mark. Let me expand this so you can see what I'm typing. I'm going to concatenate. You can concatenate with booleans. So check this out. I'm going to concatenate on nums are same. And let's take a look. Compile. It's happy. Let's run it. Okay, let's put in 13 and 13. Num1 and num2 are the same. True. Awesome. Let's run it again. Let's try 13 and 14. Num1 and num2 are the same. False. All right, it's working. All right, hopefully you can knock out the rest of these on your own. Good luck. Enjoying my class? Smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Twitface. But hey, that's just a tutorial. A computer science tutorial. Thanks for watching.